Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Time Out with Tony Dyson. And of course, this is Tony Dyson. Happy holidays to all of you all as well, because Jesus is the reason for the season. I'm going to talk a little bit today about patience. Hey Amen. Something that uh, at some point in time in our lives that um, we have experienced the lack of is patience. You know, we've become a society of uh, right now. You know, and a lot of us have developed right now type of faith. But the thing is, is when God was calling you out of your sin, when God was calling you out of your situation, what did you do? Did you stop right away? No, a lot of us did not. And yet God showed patience with us to endure the situation until we turned around and hearkened to his voice. Amen. First, I'm going to start off with uh, James, the book of James. Chapter 1, verse 2, and it states, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and unbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let ye ask in faith, nothing wavering. So people of God, when you ask God for something, you have to be faithful. See, the word also says, ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be opened. Seek and ye shall find. So when you ask God, you must have faith that um, is going to come through. You know, I... I uh, had a saying a couple of weeks ago, and I, and what I said was, you know, the bigger the faith, the bigger the situation. So, you know, as you start off with your walk with God, you have, you know, the faith, the grain of a mustard seed. And it pulled you through situations. And as your faith with God grew, so did your problems. Amen. So you can't go through with big faith without big problems. Now, also because you have big faith, you can and will conquer those little problems. But see, when you come across those great big problems, it works out your faith. And you know, uh, if you treat faith kind of like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the more you use it, you know, the more it, it, it grows, the more it shows, the more defined it becomes, the stronger it gets. So as you exercise your faith, you're going to come across bigger task, amen, to work out your faith, amen. If I may go to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3, it says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. Mm. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So if you have faith that God is going to do something, just hang on. See, you remember the woman in the Bible with the issue of blood? She had that issue for 12 long years. And yet she could have given up after four years, after eight after 10 or even after 11 but on the 12th year Jesus came by and she said if I could just touch the hem of his garment and when she touched him because she had the faith that if I can just touch him I will be made whole so as she touched him she was instantly healed amen next is going to be second Corinthians Chapter 4, verse 16, and it states, For which cause we faint not, but through our outward, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding. An eternal weight of glory. So when you're going through things, 
your affliction may be just for a moment. Amen. In the Bible, you had a had a lame man who sat by the pool for 30 years. But yet, it was just a moment. See, as I talked about a few minutes ago, it was about the woman who had the issue of blood. She had that for 12 years. Amen. Then you had the man that sat by the pool. So that 12 years compared to those 30 was just a moment. And then the 38 years versus the 400 years the children were in captivity in Egypt. That 38 years was just a moment. So people of God, what I'm saying is right now, we need to exercise our faith and our patience. See, our patience, a lot of times we get so impatient because the world has taught us to be a right now type of place. Amen. That's why we have microwaves and cars that go so fast and, you know, all this other fast type stuff. The Internet, we always want to go faster, even though, you know, the Internet will uh, it's kind of more productive faster. But you understand what I'm saying? We we want things so fast right now. We buy food ready to eat. All we have to do is heat it up versus back in the day. We used to cook everything from 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 scratch. Amen. So people of God, just by exercising your patience, which grows your faith in God and God will come through. God is true to his word. He is not a man, so he cannot lie. So his, so he is no shorter than his word. And see, people, God, what we have to understand is once once God's word goes out, it will not return to him void. So you must exercise your patience and your faith and hearken to his word, because otherwise you will miss what's going on. It's kind of like if you had a car and you took it to a mechanic. And the mechanic told you, okay, you have a blown engine. It's going to take me four weeks to fix your engine. Maybe the first two weeks, you know, you had to go back and forth to work, take the kids to school, go to the store. Maybe for that first two weeks, you, you had a ride or found a ride every day. Then comes that third week. You know, you might have to catch a cab or even walk or catch the bus. So then by the fourth week, you know, your car is on the way. But yet, you have some more stuff to do. You're tired of catching the bus. You're tired of walking. You're tired of asking people for rides. But instead of waiting for the mechanic to call you, you go to the mechanic and tell him, I want my car back now. And the mechanic says, well, I'm not finished with it. But you're so concerned on what you have to do. I don't care. I want my car back now. So you drive the car off the lot and you mess it up more than it was messed up in the first place. So people of God, what I'm saying is, is when you give a problem to God, you leave it with him. He will give it back to you once it is fixed. So you can't go back to God and try to retrieve something to do it yourself because you think you have the answer. You must let him work it out. Say all things work together. Amen. All things. So therefore, when you give God something, you leave it with him. You leave it in his lap. Thank God for patience. Thank God for he has had patience with us. Amen. Even Jesus exercised, exercised patience with the disciples. Remember the young lady whose father brought, um, yes, the young lady whose father brought uh, the daughter to the disciples. And, he, and the disciples could not heal her. And he took them to Jesus and he said, I took them to your disciples and yet they could do nothing. And Jesus said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I suffer you? He exercised patience. People of God, this holiday season, pray. Pray for one another. Pray for the ones and the families that are in need. Have some patience and show some love. Until the next time, with time out with Tony Dyson. God bless you and God keep you.